Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads and must converse is the channel. I thought it might be fun to go through the TBR shelf. This shelf is full of things that I want to get to uh, over the next year. Just uh, next on my reading. There are th a lot of things that are not on this shelf. This is basically authors that are new to me or authors that I don't own anything else by because something like I'm going to read Light in August by William Faulkner. That's going to be the next Faulkner that I read. I'm probably going to read it in the beginning part of 2022, but it sits up with the Faulkner, not on this shelf. So there's uh, things that are not on here, but this will give a good idea of where it could go this year. As far as fiction reading, you'll see a very a wide variety on this shelf. Some of the things that I'm going to get to for sure next year, um, big book wise, there's not much on this shelf. There's not going to be much big book wise in my 2022, with the exception of my reading through the Zohar. Uh, this is the project for 2022. So this will be an ongoing thing all year long. I hope to get through the Zohar proper, which is nine volumes. As far as fiction goes, uh, I am going to be participating in March of the Mammoths. Uh, David Wiley and I, no, 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 sorry, not David Wiley, um, book, El uh, Mark over at Book Time with Elvis and I are going to be doing Shogun, James Clavell's Shogun. I love this book. It's been a long time since I read it. I found this paperback copy. I have, I have a hardcover two volume a copy because I, I love it, but I found this paperback copy. I'm going to read this in March with Mark over there and Jack at Rambling Raconteur and I have some plans for some big reading. We're going to read the Sotweed Factor by John Barth, um, William T. Volman's Argall and Thomas Pinchon's Mason and Dixon, kind of a period piece kind of read, right? And another suggestion from Jack at Rambling Raconteur is Tristram Shandy. <laughs> I, uh, we, him and I read uh, Machado de Assis, Posthumous Memoirs of Brass Cubas together, and he, he, and he hearkened it back to this, saying how funny it was, and I've never read it before. So, it's a big boy, but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about it too much. The life and opinions of Tristram Shandy, gentlemen. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to it for sure. So, um, I will be as well reading just uh, my reading for the beginning of the year. Be jumping into Pedro Paramo. I like to start the year off with things that I love. The Violent Bear It Away. We're, I'm doing both of these right off the rip. Una over at Codex Cantina is reading Pedro Bermo with me and Flannery O'Connor, Violent Barrett Away. Anybody can read along. We're going to do, I'm going to do a big kind of read along. It's a wonderful book. And I'm reading Cain by Jose Saramago. This is the next Saramago that I'm going to read. Um, doing this with uh, Dave at, at Chatting Lit Podcast. And we're going to talk about... Uh, this as we read it and we're going to get on and do a podcast style exploration of it. It's going to be fun because anybody who knows me knows about my love hate relationship with Jose Saramago. And I will read <laughs> pretty much any Saramago because I do enjoy the reading, but um, I don't enjoy the content sometimes like, you know, his, his opinions, his, his uh, way of framing the world. So, uh, this is one that I can't wait to get to blinding my, uh, Mir Mirsa Kartarescu. I might be mispronouncing, uh, the, the name there, but I believe it's Kartarescu. Archipelago books put out this little square, uh, guy and it's, um, very unique looking, but this has been likened to, I think, if Proust uh, and, and Borges got together and uh, did psychedelics together. <laughs> that's what that's what blinding kind of is like. I can't wait to experience it. Uh, Sil Celia over 
uh, at this channel of the same name has been reading it, just saying how awesome it is, the language and all that. So Atomic Aztecs, I can't wait to get to this. This is an alternative history, an alternative uh, kind of world where the Aztec Indians actually whip the conquistadors when they come over. Um, South American Indians, Native American uh, Indians whip the 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 new world <laughs> are you know when they come out the uh, new world whips uh europe you know and then and then goes to europe and starts taking over <laughs> you know uh places like that so the aztec indians become like a superpower a world power um it's a, it's a slim one but this is a uh, seshu foster i can't wait to read this um i'm gonna read the quran over uh, the next year I'm just going to read it as I feel like I'll leave this kind of sitting out, you know, but I, we, I got the, the meaning of the glorious Quran by Marmaduke picked hall. This seems really, really cool. The introduction is very, very interesting how it frames what this translation of the Quran is trying to do to, um, provide understanding of what, uh, Islam and the belief system really is to a, non-Muslim. Uh, so, I can't wait to read it. It seemed super interesting, but who had it? It's Jordan Parsons had a copy of this and was talking about wanting to read it. And I said, man, I just bought it. I just got it. I just picked it up. I just read it at a goodwill. That, that introduction that he read on his video when he showed it, I had just read it like an hour before. It was so trippy to hear somebody on booktube read something that you just read for the first time you know an hour or so before and i was like what is happening i was like this is the same translation this is the same introduction so a uh, voyage to arcturus by david Lindsay. i think i saw the falcon do some content on this actually and i've never experienced it it's it is i i heard about Voyage to Archerist by David uh, Lindsay here when I was talking about Star Maker and Olaf Stapleton, this kind of philosophical sci-fi. So um, I can't wait to check it out. And it just seems really, really weird, really crazy. I'm going to move you a little bit closer because now um, it's just the shelf is all I'm going to be talking about. So uh, we'll just kind of go down and I'll pull out some and show them if we want. So there's um, Gilbert Sor Sorrentino. I have three different uh, books by him. The Moon in Its Flight is a collection of stories. So if I want to go for some short stories, I need to get Mulligan Stew to, to read. That's like his most known work. But Pack of Lies here is actually a trilogy. And so I might just start with Pack of Lies because it's just this huge postmodern work. He's like a, you know, quintessential kind of postmodern author. I don't know uh, how he kind of flew under my radar, <laughs> but, you know, there's so many out there. And that's just it. Ricky Ducournay. This is the complete butcher's tales. This is kind of a sci-fi horror, but it's flash fiction. Ricky Ducournay is a very, very smart writer and it kind of strikes me like Borges where doing this ultra uh, stripped down storytelling that really just inspires so much thought that it has a lot of value, but you're just like, what, what is it? You know, what is the point? What is it doing? And it just is very unsettling. Like I said, a lot of it is horror, like straight up horror puts you in scare, a scary frame of mind. Oh, speaking of, okay, we have On Suicide. I picked this up over the course of the last year and just had thumbed through it, but it has so many great authors. Leo Tolstoy, Sylvia Plath, Graham Greene, Albert Camus, Borges, Dorothy Parker, Walker Percy, uh, what, uh, you know, Virginia Woolf is in here, and it's their writings and thoughts on suicide. Um, what an, what a, what a... A, a group, right? To be talking about that. Adam and the Kabbalistic Tree. I picked this up. This is a Jewish Kabbalah. Um, I picked this up. I'm going to be thumbing through this now 
and, you know, ongoing, just see uh, how much value I can get if there is any value to be had in this, along with reading the Zohar, right? The Zohar is so deep and so vast that when it comes down to it, I don't need any supplemental uh, material except for what the Zohar is drawing off of and um, other other things that are used, you know, alluded to in footnotes and endnotes in the Zohar and things like that, which I have a lot of. Um, the Marriage of Sticks, this comes very highly recommended from the Bryants and was given to me. This will be uh, over the next year, a creepy story. Uh, the Reapers Are the Angels by Alden Bell. This is a recommendation by Scott Br- Danielson. And Southern Gothic and Zombies. That's what it is. If Flannery O'Connor wrote a, wrote a zombie uh, story. That's what it's like into. So freaking sign me up. You know what I mean? All the way. I got Martin Amos uh, Times Arrow right here because this was on a short, powerful uh, works list by a friend of mine. And I think uh, I had I had grabbed it because I'm like, well, a short work that really just is powerful and rocks. Bring it. So Times Arrow. The Conference of the Birds. This is alluded to in many Borges stories. And um, it's very highly recommended by my boy Jack over at Rambling Rack and Tour. So I had got a copy to experience that uh, beautiful allegory. Um, spiritual allegory is what it is. I want to reread uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the 1818 text here. I'm not sure if I've ever read the 1818 text. When I read Frankenstein, it was a long, long time ago. um, And I just don't even know if I, you know, what what version that I read or anything like that. So we'll check it out. Uh, Rabelais. I've never come in contact with Rabelais. So I uh, picked up Gargantua and uh, Pantagruel. uh, Translated with an introduction by J.M. Cohen. So robust parody conceived and executed on an epic scale. Some of the best uh, kind of satire, right? Um, I can't wait. The movie goer, Walker, Walter Percy, Peter Ackroyd's Hawks Moore. Um, these are, these are just things. The Luigi Pirandello. I have a collection of plays there. I haven't experienced most of them. So um, that one's there. Battle Airs, uh, Flowers of Evil. I have not read it. So it's up on here. A Cortazar, a blow up in other stories. Transparency. This is this this was something that I just found and looked super interesting. Polish writer. Um, this this just looks like a very atmospheric and an awesome book. So I picked it up kind of on a whim, but I can't wait to read it. Wittgenstein's Mistress by David Markson. That was something that maybe I was thinking I might get to here by the end of the year, but it didn't happen. I started listening to the White Album by Joan Didion um, on Audible because I was thinking maybe to try some audiobooks. So I started with some essays, Joan, Joan Didion, and it's pretty good. But I have been reading Zohar. You know, not the Zohar. I haven't been, you know, getting on it yet, but I'm reading a uh, supplemental uh, material book. They have a, a guide to the Zohar. I've been reading. I have read it before. And then another book by Gershom Shalm on uh, on the Zohar itself. Bridge on the Drina, the bridge on the Drina um, that that is a, has to be read. These are like. You know, Wittgenstein's Mistress, Bridge on the Drina, The Woman in the Dunes by Cabo um, Abe. That is a must reads over the next year for sure, because they're just so powerful. People love them. I have a, a, my copy of Frolic of His Own down here, but that's not right because I wanted to. Um, I'm going to read Carpenter's Gothic next. Just when I was grabbing them, I grabbed the wrong a book, you know, um, part of that brain fog action that is, is going on with me. So I had put a frolic of his own down here, but that is Carpenter's Gothic. I'm going to read that. My next William Gaddis. There's a collection of, uh, 
New York Review of Books, two, two, uh, Naked Earth by Eileen uh, Chang, and The Seventh Cross by Anna Segers. I'll show them because these NYRBs are beautiful books, right? We, I love their minimalist style. And um, always very moving, like a very, I've seen some really, really beautiful NYRB Classics editions. And um, and then another great publisher that I have a few that I want to get uh, read by is um, New Directions. I have The Wing Rings of Saturn by Sue Ball, uh, Nathaniel West, Miss, Miss Lonely Hearts, and Juna Barnes, Nightwood, all sitting here. And this these will happen over the next year as well, because... I I really want um, to experience all these books. So, I will. Um, another couple is friend uh, gifts from a friend. This is Juan over at um, Plagued by Visions. Hey, Juan. <laughs> um, Juan had hooked me up with... Sorry, I'm just trying to get comfortable. Ugh. So uh, Juan had hooked me up. We had done a book exchange, and I and he hooked me up with ta- with Harry Cruz. I had never read any Harry Cruz, so he had a childhood, um, the biography of a place, and that place is um, the South. So it is it is t- Harry Cruz is very Southern Gothic um, himself, and then also a, a Southern Gothic uh, novel called A Choir of Ill Children by Tom Piccarelli. Pisa, Piccarelli? Something like that, maybe. So, um, looks creepy. Sounds cool. Uh, I had read, you know, the back of it looks good. The type of things that are said on it. And it just, you know, I'm, I'm down for just some good, dark uh, stuff, you know. Um, I love Southern Gothic. I love this kind of this kind of reading. So, um, and then I have some kind of hippie stuff. I have some uh, Brautigan. I want to read in Watermelon Sugar. Somebody had put it on their uh, list of just like books they wish they could experience again for the first time. So, in Watermelon Sugar, and then some kind of memoir ish stuff. We have I have John Berryman's Recovery right here. Um, Joan Didion's Slouching Towards Bethlehem, a portrait of a time and place for sure. Sontag's Regarding the Pain of Others. Patty Smith's Just Kids. So, um, a, 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 and, and it goes to through women, uh, the rest of the shelf. Um, not all the women are together, of course, you know, because I didn't do it on purpose. There's Mary Shelley and, um, you know, the collection, um, there, but, uh, when it comes down to it, I'm going to read a couple of Toni Morrison novels. I have beloved, uh, I hear is just hardcore and, and awesome, uh, kind of on, on the level of Frankenstein, perhaps beloved and Sula. Oh, Jack is doing a read along of Sula and I have not read Sula before. So it is time. So I'm going to read Sula and Beloved. And then I have a collection of Alice Munro's short stories. Alice Munro is a author that I've never read anything by. She's a very strong short story writer. She has a lot of shorter short stories out. So I had a friend do a, another a friend do a book exchange for that and, and gave me a, a collection of her short stories to experience. So thank you very much. Um, other than that, like I said, there's there's books around that I'm going to read that are not on this shelf. But this is kind of my, uh, you know, possibilities where you can see and leave any kind of recommendation for any books or any ideas that you have down in the comments and we'll see where this uh, year goes as far as uh, the reading, because, uh, you know, I can go I can go a lot of places. Right. Y'all have a great one, book too. Thank you. Bye bye.